Hello and thank you for your interest in the Level 4 Protective Security Advisor qualification which is available as both a standalone qualification and as an apprenticeship in England for those that can access the apprenticeship levy. Now why are we here? We are looking at protective security uh, where every piece matters. So for example you could have really really fantastic cyber security but if your personnel security is not so good uh, personal security being how you manage your insider risk, um, your overall security is going to be weak. Similar, if you're not treating all of the different disciplines of protective security as equals, your security will be weak. We've also included the four main disciplines of protective security within this qualification, so cyber security, personnel security, physical security, which looks at both forcible attack and surreptitious attack, and technical security, which looks at the, the, the wraparound um, to prevent information egress through technical surveillance devices, etc., or close access acquisition. We've also included personnel security. We very much see this as rapidly becoming the fifth discipline in protective security. So why are we here? I'm going to give you a bit of a history lesson. So the first industrial revolution was brought about by advances in technology, and that being the invention of uh, the mills, uh, particularly in the northwest of England, etc. Um, and it meant individuals could work rather than work in a field for 18 hours a day, uh, they could come and work in a factory for 18 hours a day. Uh, the advances in the technology progressed and the second industrial revolution was brought about again by technology, this time the invention of the steam train. And that carried forward into the third industrial revolution, which happened around about 1950, 1960s. And that was the digital age where we started to record and store information digitally uh, online, etc. The present industrial revolution, which we're in or industry four, is the fourth. And this is driven by the fusion of technologies across the physical, digital and biological worlds. So this is the fusion of technologies, and it's largely driven by the Internet of Things. We expect by 2030 that brain-computer integration will be standard, um, enabling those um, with serious spinal injuries to walk again, etc. And we are currently progressing at pace, at rapid pace, towards the fifth industrial revolution, or Industry 5, which is the notion of harmonious human-machine collaboration. Now, what we've got to remember here is, as technology advances, um, our attack surface gets bigger, i.e. how threat actors demonstrating malevolent creativity can target us in many, many ways. And every day, with, as technology advances, uh, our attack surface gets bigger. Those that are tasked with defending against threat actors really need to be match fit and really need to develop robust security mitigations. Uh, we need to be both dynamic and adaptive in our approach. Um, what we are seeing is a lot of actual uh, security threats uh, are a blended approach or what we call a converged approach. So they may span multiple disciplines of cyber, personnel, physical, technical, or even personnel security. So we really need a, a similar approach to mitigate against those threats. Organizations are crying out the desperate for a single overview of risk, of protective security risk, because protective security risk is actually business risk. And that's what we've got to remember here. So we've developed the two qualifications are pretty much exactly the same, just different methods of doing it. And I'll discuss that later on. But we've developed this qualification based on of our uh, professions. We looked at the, the nursing profession and what you would do if you were going into nursing, you'd learn the basics of care first, etc. And then you'd go on to specialize uh, with a deep specialism in a particular subject. We've pretty much mirrored that within protective security. So we want this qualification to give individuals and delegates and complete this course, the base level of competence with regards to cybersecurity, physical security, personnel security, technical security, and personnel security to enable them to develop a deep specialism. Let's just say, for example, you do go on to uh, develop a deep specialism in cybersecurity. You'll understand how physical, personnel, technical, and personnel security dovetail to give you that holistic approach to security or security convergence as we call it and i have a saying and i sound like a stuck record uh, but what i say is you can't have cyber security without physical personal technical and personal security it's as simple as that so this is tyson's definition of security convergence 
and uh, we think this is a really good it's a little bit clunky but it's a really good definition and it really speaks out around the organizational wide benefits um, effective risk mitigation that convergence will bring uh, enhanced effectiveness of your operations increased efficiency and financial savings we do a lot of work across each discipline at the moment which is duplicated if we can minimize that duplication of effort certainly we're going to make us more effective and more efficient and provide financial savings moving forward uh, we pulled together a group to develop it it was a collaboration of public private sector organizations and academia the unique selling point with this qualification is it's the first ever qualification to have not only the involvement of the three national technical authorities that being the National Protective Security Authority, the National Cyber Security Centre and the UK National Authority for Counter Eavesdropping, they not only contributed to this qualification, but they also are going to endorse it. And that's the only qualification uh, that's ever had that so far. We will be developing future qualifications um, to support individuals in their pathway. However, at the moment, it's the only qualification endorsed by and backed by all three national technical authorities. So the module content, um, first of all, the whole purpose of this course is to ups either upskill existing staff, give those coming into the sector as a first career a really good grounding in what protective security is, and for also those coming in from perhaps uh, uh, through a graduate scheme, such so as you may have done a, a degree in criminology, etc. You come in, this actually bridges academia and uh, real life operations. So it provide enable you to hit the ground running and also those coming in from a second career so if they've come in from the police or the military it gives you an understanding of what protective security is how it's done properly and will give you a fighting chance of making a good career uh, within this sector the modules are on the right hand side of the screen there so crime and security science a very much a contemporary subject um, we very much wanted this to be the very first module because it's not just um, um, telling you how to do something, it's giving you the understanding why and how to do something. So it'll enable individuals to go on and problem solve uh, within their own organisations. Legislation and governance does exactly what it says on the tin. And then we've got two modules on protective security risk management, part one, part two. And this takes you through the full, what we call the protective security risk management process, which looks at your governance. It looks at your assets, identifying and classifying those assets. It's looking at uh, assessing your threat or providing a threat analysis. And we're then looking at your risk that you have, then your risk mitigation. Uh, and then we go on to specialize in the uh, physical security standards and mitigations. So that includes all things related to forcible attack, including blast, to also surreptitious attack, which is often uh, overlooked by many organizations. This is one of the reasons why it's in this qualification. We then look at personnel security. So everything you do to an organization can do to, to mitigate the insider risk. We then look at people security and culture. So that's how you would develop a, a culture, an ecosystem that is not just involving security teams, because we all know security is the responsibility of everybody. It's the, how you develop a culture on site to mitigate things like hostile reconnaissance, et cetera, and provide that natural level of uh, a natural level of surveillance across your organization and territoriality as well. Um, personnel security, everything uh, to do with um, keeping your employees safe or keeping you safe as an individual. Technical security covers all the ways in which um, technical security attacks can egress information out of an organization. Uh, cyber security does exactly what it says on the tin incident management to investigations security is a business enabler that's a really really interesting one because we really need individuals to be able to demonstrate their worth to an organization and the worth of security mitigations to an organization so we can uh, this this includes things like re return on security investment and cost benefit analysis etc so you can put a pounds or dollars to uh, the costs of um, security mitigation but also Give you that return on investment how much are you going to save over the long run and finally last but certainly not least uh, reflection and continuous professional development reflection is huge uh, and it's it's used widely across other sectors in healthcare in probation even um, but it's not so much used in protective security or the security sector reflection is really important because it enables us to learn adapt overcome move forward be dynamic and be adaptive and it also enables us to become more resilient individuals 
which supports our organisations to become more resilient too. Um, it's a fantastic qualification, and I really wish I had this when I was starting my career. So basically, this qualification is basic to provide a base level of competence with regards to protective security. It's a step towards security convergence. It's the ground up approach to security, enabling security convergence. It will provide delegates with a pathway to undergraduate qualification. We are looking to develop a level six qualification after this. And also it, we expect it to enhance diversity, giving people opportunities in sectors that they probably never even heard of, certainly technical security or personnel security. Um, but also we want it to be the only barrier that we want for anybody to work in this sector is competence. That's the only barrier that we want. And we believe this qualification gives you that competence to enable you to work effectively in protective security. Uh, we want uh, we want to develop future leaders in security. We've, I've mentioned those coming in as a first career, as a second career. I've mentioned about enhancing diversity, but also future proof and security. So I was very pleased to see the World Economic Forum recommended that security management was a desirable career choice moving forward. However, I would argue that, yes, it is a desirable career choice, but we need to be operating at Industry 4, heading towards Industry 5, not in our current domain, which is operating at Industry 3 or the Third Industrial Revolution. So this will enable individuals to move forward with that understanding of where we are and where we're heading to enable them to better mitigate the threat and risks that their organisations face. And also it's to provide a shared understanding so the public sector and the private sector can talk the same language and basically the sector as a whole can speak the same language, um, which always provides an issue um, when you see interagencies trying to work with each other, etc. So we want a shared understanding of terminology. This is a, a brilliant quote from Aline Wakefield and Button back from 2013. So security convergence is nothing new, but basically we're looking to unite the disciplines. Um, so the disciplines are cyber, personnel, physical, technical and personnel security, if they're not united, our threat actors will exploit the gaps in between each discipline and prosper from that and makes our organizations weaker. Um, so security convergence looks to, to bridge those gaps and close those gaps so they can't be exploited. Um, I've mentioned the future of protective security. We very much need individuals who are dynamic and adaptive that will push through their own comfort zones and demonstrate altruism not only to support their organizations, but also the wider sector. We're looking to push forward with professionalism, and this is one of the first steps to that. So what we're trying to achieve with this, we really are looking to develop individuals that can rapidly progress through protective, the ranks of protective security and can become leaders in their own rights. And I particularly don't like the term thought leadership. I much prefer the term do leadership. But this, Steve Jobs sums us up, Beautifully. We really need the doers because they are the major thinkers. They work through the problems, they learn from the problems and uh, face challenges head on and overcome them. This is what we're trying to create with this qualification. We want individuals to be able to move forward, to meet the rigor and meet the demands of not only Industry 4, but also Industry 5 in a dynamic and adaptive manner.